What's going on, fellas? I appreciate those of you that are hanging out and waiting. Welcome to all of you watching the replay at a later time and date. Uh, wasn't originally planning on going live. I have a package that came in earlier today, and I was like, hey, you know what? I was about to record the weekly rotation, and I thought, the hell, jump on for 45 minutes or so. I know what one of these fragrances are. It's a package from Making Sense, by the way, from Michael Dinsmore. And uh, shame on me. I just realized I didn't bring my scent of the day over here. Uh, what are you guys wearing? I'm wearing Sorodora Gladiator, which is basically a fresh, fruity, woody, almost Aventus-like smell. Some of you have heard me talk about this one before. Some of you are familiar with the fragrance yourselves. Um, maybe like 60% Aventus, you know, at best. But it will give you the vibe of it. But it's more of a different fragrance overall. Uh, in my shorts video I did earlier, I called it the Aventus Killer because I'd take that 10 times out of 10 over Aventus. It's fan freaking tastic. It's great everyday fragrance. I see all of you guys. What's going on, Montrese? Joel, I see all of you. Sean, that's an interesting layering combo. Unav's in the house. We got Alan Neeb's in here. I was just texting with Neeb. Ross Montrese, Neeb. Yeah, yeah. What's up, homie? What's going on, big dog? How are you? See everybody. So we got Matabaco Cuba. Never tried that one. Y E D P Club de Nui Iconic, which was my favorite of the three. For those of you that didn't see today's video, I got my package in from, from Perfume Online, Untold, Iconic, and Urban Man Elixir Plus, Stronger With You Intensely. Go check that one out. Gentle Fluidity Gold. Now we're talking Darren J. What's going on? So for those of you just jumping in, send they match it and BR540 X straight. Ooh. So wearing Sphinx Date Night. Okay, as well. It's quite the quite the blend. Okay, Vanilla Havan is what do. And Sin of the Day and Dior Oud Isofan is my Sin of the Night. I, oh, I know you meant first date. Woods Collection, Royal Knight, Chopard, Musk, Malaki, Swiss Arabian, Shagaf, Azrak Oud. I'm guessing that's how you say that, Azrak Oud. Make sure you hit that like for me, guys. We're, we're climbing in viewers pretty quickly, but we're not climbing in likes. I'm seeing 60 viewers, 23 likes. We can do better than that. Hit that thumbs up. And uh, we'll go ahead and start. So... One of these, like I said, I, it's, this is heavy. This is from Michael Dinsmore. There's definitely more than one fragrance in here. I know what one of them is, and I'm going to fish that one out, and we'll do that one first because I literally had somebody today, today ask me a great clone for this particular fragrance, and this is going to be the first time I smell a clone of this fragrance. I got the original right here. I made sure to grab it. But we're going to fish it out, and I'm going to wait to show you guys what it is. I'm not going to say it. We'll talk about it because I think it's kind of funny. For what he named it for his version of it and the logo that he used and all of that so pull this out what's going on jared how are you yeah there's that's definitely way more than one fragrance guys shout out to mikey dims i tagged him on uh on the instagram post in my story so i'm sure he when he can get to this if he can jump on while we're live i don't know but we, we shall see so let's see what I'll, okay yeah it's Six fragrances. Jesus, that's way more than I anticipated. So I'm going to fish out the main one I'm on the hunt for first, guys. I don't want to show you all of them first. So since it's six, we are going to do test strips. You know, you guys know I hate doing these test strips because it's going to leave out so much detail of the scent profile. But we got to do it this way. You know, I'm not rolling my sleeves all the way up and spraying stuff all over me. Not tonight. I don't feel like doing that tonight. Even though I am going to be showering in a little while. I just don't feel like doing that. I guess that's not it. Let me fish it out real quick, guys. Volcanus, my man. I'm going to start calling you the super chat and super thanks king. I appreciate the $10 super chat, man. Salute to you as well, sir. Galan Ideal Extreme, the only one I don't have a bottle of. I've tried it. It's just the only one. I What a name. <laughs> we'll get to that one. I'll even say it a certain way that you guys will be expecting when you see and hear the name i know what that one's supposed to be had somebody ask me about that here it is all right so here we go michael densmore this is called warrior please focus for me real quick please please focus so you can probably see even in the blur you can see the ultimate warrior's face paint outline come on focus see I moved my camcorder, so it's webcam or nothing at this point. Come on. Come on, focus, man. 
Why does it got to be a pain? That's what I hate about this camera is the autofocus is terrible. There we go. So you see that ultimate warrior with all the pain. So why warrior? Because it's a clone of Loam Ultime. Ultime, ultimate warrior. Not the best play on words, but it's kind of funny. That's the route he won. Here I have my 60 ml of Loam Ultime. So we have a clone of Loam Ultime. I've never smelled anybody's version. I'm sure they're out there. I've never smelled a version of Loam Ultime. He's got a few interesting names for these. But I thought Warrior was an interesting choice. It's a weird name. <laughs> so we'll do all that stuff after. So first things first. Let me grab actual Loam Ultime. We'll get it sprayed on a test strip real quick. Oh, I mean, for some reason, it it's why is Kyler's comment an, uh, under approval? Hit the like button, please. Get the word out with bullhorns. I don't know why YouTube immediately blocked that one down, but I appreciate all nine of you being here. We literally have half the likes to viewers, guys. Let's hit that thumbs up if you don't mind. So here we go. The discontinued and often, you know, looked for, hunted down. When I do this, it wants to focus. But when I get that mat, that reflection in there, it doesn't want to do it. But Loam Ultime from YSL, one of the best Loam flankers ever produced. That's my that's my take on it. Um, dry Rose and Ginger. Ah, oh, so beautiful. God, that's such a good fragrance. Let's see how close Mike was able to get it. Give it two good sprays. So here we have the real deal in my left hand. Michael Densmore's clone. We have Lomo Team. We have Warrior. Oh, even on paper, that's stunning. It's a stunning fragrance. Pretty accurate. Not as bright, because I'm sure Mike... I mean, it's an X-Straight, I'm sure. Yeah, it's an X-Straight. So the heavier oil concentration weighs down some of the brightness. That's hilarious. Yeah, I should grab the ropes and start shaking it. Yeah, for sure. There's a subtle difference. There's something here that's not in the clone. I get the ginger rose combo and it's a little dry and dusty. It's not as sweet. Michael's Mike's version is not as sweet. I agree, sir, and I'm glad you feel that way. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, I will have a decant coming very soon. Shout out to my man, Randy, who is in the chat. Timothy, how are you? Dude, huge, huge fan, man. I'm, I'm nobody special, man. I, I appreciate that, though. Yeah, I don't wear it that often either, and it's, it's so good, man. That's what's lacking here. It doesn't have the same sweetness on paper. On skin could open up more. It does come across a little bit more fresh, a little bit more on the fresh, spicy side than the original. The original's fresher and a little bit sweeter. It's not too bad, though. I have to say, you know what? Since it's the only one that I'm comparing to the original, because I have no clue what the other ones are, I'm gonna put a little bit on skin. You know, I always say we're not gonna do skin, and we do. So, clone on the right hand. We're going to go real deal on the left hand, spraying towards the knuckles because I didn't want to spray my watch. We'll give these a second because the perfumer is alcohol. Yes, sir. Indeed. Just picked up Signature Rosé. Oh, my God. What a masterpiece. I agree, sir. That is another fantastic masterpiece. That's That and Leather Tabac are my two favorites from Zaharoff, not counting you know my own Z Creator Creations. But uh, that is definitely the way to go. God, all teams good. It is a little bit spicier, even on skin, the clone. That's what's different. There's a light sweetness. Whatever the light sweet note is in all team is either dialed back greatly or missing from the clone. Pretty close. I would say like 80 to 85% accurate. 
Maybe that was just in the top, though, because they are getting closer. So probably in that 85% range, at least as far as these openings and top notes are concerned. Uh-oh. My man, best of luck to you, dude. I'm uh, I'm trying to cut back right now. Um, I've tried to eliminate the bloat, and I've been depriving myself of some of the pleasures, including my diet sodas, which is absolute nightmare for me. Um, I did have Chipotle twice in the last week and had a Diet Coke both times. That's the only diet sodas. I'm still not completely off of the diet sodas, but you guys got to remember, I was drinking a 16.9 ounce bottle of Diet Dr. Pepper, probably three to four bottles a day to now. I've had two diet fountain diet Cokes in the last week. There's a huge, huge difference for me. It is getting closer and closer, but I'm going to stick to the 85% mark between the two. So I'm going to put this in the win column. I'm not going to say one-to-one -one at all, but when it comes to low mall team, Mike did a pretty good job. I'm not going to say knocked it out the park, but with, Warrior, which is his brand new clone of Lom All Team, you know, 10 out of 10 for the theme and the colors and all that stuff for the label. But it's getting closer and closer as it dries. It's it 85 to 90 percent. Pretty damn good. And I can't tell the quality difference. So kudos to Mikey. Like I said, I'll have making sense. It's already linked down in the description if you want to check out any of these. These 17 MLs go for 20 bucks before any codes. I don't have any codes, but if you reach out to Mikey, he's probably got something, you know. Let's see. Volcanus with another super chat. Man, thank you so much. Seriously. $5 super chat. Try Zevia. They have Stevia instead of Aspartame. So that's one of the reasons I switched to the snack pack sugar-free Jellos, uh, because Jello brand uses Aspartame, and it's sucralose, sucralose, however you say it, with uh, – I've never quite – check to see the exact pronunciation um because i like stevia as well stevia and sucralose because sucralose is in most of my protein powders that i've used over the years i prefer that as an artificial sweetener it's not as bad for you obviously diet dr pepper with strawberries and cream well that kind of eliminates the point of the diet dr pepper now doesn't it <laughs> so but i appreciate the super chat man thank you so much says you can drink all the diet so do you want and drink a lot of it you can, but it's something that I've gorged myself in over the years that I feel like it's, I mean, too much of anything is not good for the body. So it was time to take a break from it, you know? So we're, we are going to do a split screen now with the Making Sense website because I don't know what any of these other ones are, guys. So I appreciate the 117 of you that are here. Let me check. 61 likes. That is so disappointing. We are so much better than that. But... I digress. I can't make you guys like the stream. You know what I mean? So here we have Starry Night. Of course, Montal Starry Nights is what comes to mind immediately. So we're not going to go completely blind into this because I don't want to just sit here and just ramble on um, over and over and over about what I pick up and so on. Let's, let's make it a little bit smoother process here. Here we go, Starry Nights. Van Cleef and Arpels, Midnight in Paris. Okay, so I do have a decant somewhere in this pile, but I'm not even going to bother looking for it. So this is supposed to be Midnight in Paris. I don't know if it's EDT or EDP. I believe there's two versions. Leather, vanilla, smoky, warm, spicy, aromatic, balsamic, animalic, sweet, and almond. Top notes of leather, bergamot, amalfi, lemon, holly, and rosemary. Mid is tea, styrax, and lily of the valley. Base of tonka bean, incense, benzoin, almond, and ambergris and amber. All right, give it two sprays. <sighs> kind of that burnt, rubbery, leathery smell. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely reminds me of it. Hit the like button. I agree. Hit that like button, guys. Let's take a look. A few more people did. We're at 74. We're getting there. Hopefully, we can get to that 100 like part at some point. Sure was. I also get le got Legend Intense. For under $20. Wow. Dylan says, what's up, Ross? Killing it with the content. 1230 Sunday where I am. Sunday day, Mont Blanc Individuel. Much love from Guam. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. God, this smells really good. That Styrax kind of, that weird balsamic smell that Styrax puts out. I'm getting a lot of that on the paper. Still fresh. 
but not like citrus fresh. So that's probably like this. Well, I mean, the lemon could be playing a part. I don't get lemon distinctively. The rosemary kind of jumps out more like rosemary styrax. It's a weird combo. Little herbal green, fresh green. It's not blowing me away on the paper, but it does smell really good. Like I could see this being very enjoyable. It's very fresh. For the note breakdown, you wouldn't think it's going to be as fresh as it is, especially with it being an X straight. But it is very, very fresh. So just to give you guys an idea, here's all the options. 17 ml, 30 ml, 50 ml, 100 ml. That's the way Mikey does it. So see how it says 20 to 70 for any codes. So that's 20, 30. So you can get 13 ml more for $10 more. 45 bucks for a 50 ml and 70 bucks for a 100 ml. It's a strange one. A little resinous. It's oddball fragrance. Definitely Van Cleef and Arpel's Midnight in Paris because that's an oddball fragrance too. Let me slide some of this out the way. So here's an interesting name. This one is called Inception. Let me click back. Getting it to focus would just be great. There we go. Inception. So let's see what the hell Inception is supposed to be. Or is supposed to be. Here we go. Louis Vuitton Imagination. No experience with that fragrance. So I couldn't even begin to tell you any memory, scent memory recollection of that scent profile. So I'm just going to judge it as an individual. You know, I have no choice here. Pace Accelerate. Ooh, that's a good one. I love wearing that one out the shower into the gym. No, I don't find it to be. I don't think it really is all that. It's just one of those strange type fragrances. Think, think now, not the same scent profile, but how Ganymede's kind of strange. Some people love it. Some people can't stand it. Kind of the same thing here. Midnight in Paris was a hype beast darling when it got discontinued. And it was at the rack stores for like 20 bucks years ago. Smells really nice, though. I don't, I don't think it's super masculine. Just randomly sitting in the clearance section of Marshall's. That is so weird. That's lucky. Ooh. Okay, what are these notes? I get a lot of citrus. Citrus and wood. Okay. Top notes. Citron, Calabrian bergamot, and Sicilian orange. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. A lot of citrus. Mid-notes, Nigerian ginger, Tuscan... Tun I don't know how to say that. Neroli and cinnamon. Base notes of Chinese black tea and Brox and Gayak wood. That's what's jumping out. And Olibanum. So a smoky wood and a smoky resin. Incense, basically. That's really jumping out. The Gayak wood, Olibanum, and citrus. That's pretty much what I get right here. Instead of licking the stream, we'll just like the stream. But I know I appreciate that, Lewis. I know, I know you meant like. Yeah, Mike's got some new scents. Uh, so far, we've only smelled Warrior, which is his newest clone of YSL Loam Ultime, uh, Starry Nights, which is Van Cleef and Arpel's Midnight in Paris, and then right now, Louis Vuitton Imagination, which he's calling Inception. On the paper, all I get is just bright citrus, dark smoke, and woods. It's an oddly enjoyable combination. I like this the most of the three so far. It's fresh and, and but still has depth because of this smoky woody tone. This is really nice on the paper. I bet this opens up really good on, on skin. I bet it does. Uh, that's going to be a separate vid. Yeah, that's going to be a separate vid, Randy. Man, this isn't bad. He said, I'm not licking nothing, bro. <laughs> For sure. Oh, there he is. Mikey, did you catch from the start? There's a little bit of sweetness missing from the opening from Ultine to Warrior. But as it starts to dry, it starts to get really close. I was thinking 80, 85%. And the more it settled, the more it got to 85, 90%. And actually, it's been a few more minutes. This is the real one. And this is Warrior. The slightest of difference. I can't even tell you what it is. There's this faint 
just not carbon copy, it's definitely at least 90% at this point. Pretty good, though, man. On speedy mode. There you go. Yeah, lick the stream and keep doing it. There you go. But Inception is fantastic. Inception's my favorite of the group so far. I really like this, guys. If you want a different freshie for the summertime and you don't want to spend a lot of money, spend 20 bucks on this 17 ml. I don't know how easy it is, easy it is to get samples from Mike. I know he does samples. Maybe reach out to him, message him something. He'll elaborate in the chat, I'm sure. This is great. This is fantastic. I like this one the most so far. Okay, next, I'm assuming this is going to be heavier with, look at the dark color juice first and foremost, but it's called Absolute Power. If I could get it to focus, that would just be peachy, wouldn't it? Oh, screw it. Let's onward to the site. I'm just going to type in power. We got a few with power in the absolute power. Strong with you, absolutely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I see what you did there, Mike, because I've been having this love affair with Strong with you, absolutely, recently. Okay. Ooh, I smelled through that atomizer. Okay. Let's see. I'm not going to grab my bottle. I'm super familiar with that fragrance. I've been wearing it a lot lately in the last several weeks. Definitely smells like it out in the air. Yeah, no clap and spin from me. Did you lose sound? Did my audio go out? No, my audio is working fine. I'm looking at the feedback. It's you. You lost sound. My audio. I, I just checked the feedback. My audio is good. So the original Mercedes Benz, the one I did the greatest cheap fragrance of all time that you've probably never smelled that video a couple weeks ago. Yeah, well, he says he got me to buy it. He messed. He texted me a picture and asked me about it. So I sent him the link. I was like, I just talked about it recently. Randy, I also did an, a, a comparison video from that versus the Intense like four years ago, you know, as well. Like I've had it for years and years. I just revisited it, re revisited it recently. 100 likes and Ross will spend 100 likes and I'll just thank you. <sighs> okay, I changed my answer. This is my favorite in the video now. This one's a little bit boozier on paper than the real deal. Then again, it's not on skin. We have to keep that in mind. But again, for those of you just joining, Absolute Power, which is Mike's version of Stronger With You, absolutely. God. Top notes of rum, elemy, and bergamot, mids, lavender, and divana. Base is chestnut, Madagascar, vanilla, cedar, and patchouli. Rum, cinnamon, chestnut, The patchouli is standing. It's a creamy patchouli. The patchouli is really standing out on the paper, actually. Kind of surprised at how much. Damn, this is good. All right, good job, Mike. I'm just going to say good job for, you know, <sighs> I'm not even going to grab the original because, like I said, I've worn it so much recently. I mean, what the hell? We got. I can always use the decant. Decant's right here. Decant of absolutely. I'm out of test strips. I didn't realize you were sending six fragrances, Mike. I didn't prepare with enough test strips. Let me pull a little stack out. So just for comparison's sake, why the hell not? I have sprays within reach. So, again, this is a decant of Stronger With You, absolutely. I don't know if it's going to focus or not, but that's what it is. Real one. Clone, absolute power. Let this one dry a little bit, catch up more. It needs to catch up more. Yeah, I did mean his house. I mean, raw stress for less. Yeah, there you go. You got your nose on Toomey's Continuum. No, I have not. I have not. I was a little underwhelmed by Awaken and Unwind. Like, they're okay to where it didn't, made, it didn't make me want to try any of the other ones. But a bunch of people have asked me about Continuum. Supposedly, it's like the best one. I may have to try it eventually at some point. So Mike's has a little bit more patchouli standing out, but the openings are very, very similar. Yeah, that, that's what we're that's what we're going over right now. The openings are very, very similar. The, the main difference I detect is the patchouli Mike used 
stands out a little bit more. I don't think it's the same type of patchouli. It's a creamy, slightly earthy patchouli that he used. Uh, it's pretty damn close, though. Mike's really good at trying to lock down the accuracy because, like, with Iris Man, for example, he tried, like, seven renditions before he finally got one he was happy with, and it's pretty much spot on. I would call that one 95% or better. Absolute power is getting in that range. It's at least 90% as well. Fantastic. Again, fantastic. So this is my new favorite. We'll rank them after. Let me put them in order. Let me put them in order so I don't forget. Next, we have Odin, which I believe is Yudin from Zerzov. I believe. Not certain. No, it's Wajan. Okay, it's a Wajan. I haven't smelled a Wajan in a long time. I know Randy's a big fan. I know a lot of people are big fans. So I don't remember the scent perfectly because, like I said, it's been a few years since the last time I smelled it. I don't own a Wajan. I used to have a DK. Two good sprays. We're not even going to look at the nose. Whoo, cinnamon. A lot of cinnamon. Oh, a lot of cinnamon. What's the notes here? Let's look. Cinnamon, honey, and osmanthus, mid notes of benzoin, labdanum, ambergris, and artemisia, base notes, tonka bean, vanilla, patchouli, ambergris, and musk. Cinnamon bomb at the top, guys. Both. That's now automatically my answer when somebody asks me one or the other from anything, and they're both great fragrances. Both. I would suggest sampling both to see which one you like more. Personally, I would go Le Parfum. I don't know why you put EPD, but um, I would go with Le Parfum. It's funny that you say that, because if you scroll back, I said yours was a little bit spicier in the opening. That's hilarious. That is hilarious, because I pointed that out. I didn't even know you did that. That's, it stands out that way. Inception has some naturals in it to boost it. I really enjoy it. Well, this is a cinnamon. Now it's becoming sweet. A lot of cinnamon, though. Like big red gum kind of cinnamon bomb. Now, this is on the paper, too. But for those of you just joining, Odin, which is Parfums de Marley Ojan. Or Ojan. It's Ojan or Ojan. I've heard it both ways. Typo. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. I, I know what you meant. I'm not sure, man. I was lucky enough to get a gift set from Belk a few months ago. Came, oh, okay. I'm talking about something else. Power was was for you, crush on me, slash, it's because of your love of it. That's what I'm saying. I see what you did here. I know you did that on purpose because I, I keep raving about it. Oh, that cinnamon's starting to settle into this honey. If I'm being honest, it kind of, on paper, reminds me a little bit of honey oud from Montal minus the oud because it's a lot of cinnamon and honey at the top. Of course, it's oud as well, but... You take the oud away, it's a similar opening. A little earthy floral tone. What's in here? Osmanthus. Okay, that's what that is. Typically an earthy floral. This is really good. Varvados Vintage to my nephew's, nephew's birthday party today. I, well, you smelled really, really good, sir. I haven't worn that one in quite some time. I still call it the Justin Copeland special. That's his Aqua Essenziali Blue. <laughs> Damn, this is good. Back to DJ, and thanks for sharing with the community. Have a great night. No, thank you for sharing with me so I can share with everyone else. I appreciate you, Mikey. They're going to go with the pile. I'm going to have to slide some stuff and make room for the big pile I've now accumulated of your fragrances. This is the best. Before you go, I hope you're still here, Mike. This is the best batch all around that you've sent me of fragrances. They're all hits. Starry Night's my least favorite, and it's the most unique of the group because it's Midnight Paris. This is fantastic. If you like cinnamon-heavy, honey, tobacco, earthy florals, you'll like Odin. Where am I going to put that one? That's tough. Ooh, that's tough. Right there, I guess. Okay, last one is Jupiter's Satellite. 
this is going to be the last one. We'll talk for a little bit. I'm just going to type, get this out the way. I'm just going to type Jupiter. Whoops. All right, Jupiter's satellite is supposed to be Ganymede. <laughs> well, there you go. So we have two oddball fragrances in this video. Uh, I'm hoping this is better than Emir Celestial. I don't like that. I know Juan does. I know Joel, who's in here in the chat, Joel's Matrix. I know he likes it as well. I don't like the Paris Corner version. It's definitely Ganymede. That odd metallic, cold metal milky lactonic smell the quality's way better than paris corners version way way better that was a good guess but yeah it's for sure that was a good guess oh this is way better this is so much closer to ganymede than than paris corners version Top notes of mandarin and saffron. Mid notes, violet and osmanthus. Base notes, immortel, akigali wood, and ambergris. You look at that note breakdown and nothing screams metallic, right? Very metallic. Very, very, just a different oddball metallic. Almost sour milk in some ways. That's why I say lactonic. Strange, you know what I mean? Strange fragrance, but I like it. I like it for sure. This is way better. Mike, I hope you're still hearing this. This is so much better than the Paris Corner version, Emir Celestial. I'd rather get, you know, what is it, 30 ml for 30 bucks? I'd rather get one ounce of this. Yeah, one ounce of this for 30 bucks than 100 ml, 3.3 ounces of that one for 30 bucks. I can sit here and sniff on this one. Okay, because you nailed this down, that's my number one. Because you nailed it. So let's go through the rankings here. Yeah, very metallic, lactonic, and woodsy. Very strange. Strange, strange, strange fragrance. Uh, I'm missing something there. There you go. That makes sense because the quality is night and day difference from Celestial, which those are cheap oils. It's a cheap Middle Eastern clone, you know. I can just sit here and sniff and sniff. So, all right. So that, that settles that then. So if I was to rank them accordingly, I'm giving this an 8.5 out of 10. This is Jupiter Satellite. This is his version of Ganymede. I don't know if it's going to play ball with focusing. There we go. It's an 8.5 out of 10. There is a close tie here with absolute power, which is stronger with you absolutely. Come on, focus for me. Come on. Show me you love me and focus, you bastard. It's because of that yellow, that sunlight, whatever. 8.5 out of 10 because he nailed this one down as well. Inception, which is imagination, Louis Vuitton. It's just a joy to smell a lot of citrus and smoky woods is what I got from it. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. It gets a half a tick back. Then Warrior, which is Loam Ultim, his newest one. Of course, it's not going to focus because it's so bit such a busy background and a busy label on top of that. There we go. Warrior, his version of Loam Ultim. It is indeed spicier. It is very accurate to it. I think this one deserves an 8 as well out of 10. This is another one. This is great. There's the original here versus the clone. It's pretty close. Odin, this was tough with uh, Parfums de, de Marley Ojan, Ojan, however you want to say it. I'm going to say it's very good at a 7.5 out of 10. Some of you may have ranked it ahead of the other ones. All good. I get it. Um but I'm going to go 7.5 out of 10 because not everything can be great and above, right? Something's got to start dropping off in the rankings. And then with Starry Night, Van Cleef and Arpels, Midnight in Paris, um, I really like it, but I don't love it. I think I'm going to go with a 6.5 out of 10 just because it's not really my thing. But it is better than good. I mean, the quality's there. It has that unique oddity smell that Midnight in Paris can provide. 
So it's a 6.5 out of 10. It's my least favorite. That's why it's getting a 6.5 out of 10. But, you know, round of applause for Michael Densmore. Like I said when he was here a minute ago, this is the most well-rounded package he's ever sent me because he usually sends me two or three at a time. This the biggest he's ever sent me, having six in here. But the main thing for me is that it's all a bunch of quality stuff. Like he really nailed down these scent profiles. He, as he was stating earlier, he started using more naturals with a lot of these. And that goes a long way with really nailing down accuracy because you can nail a scent profile down, but it still smells like a cheaper version. Whereas here, he really went for keeping the quality up as best he could. So I commend that. And they're super cheap. I mean, this is nothing expensive here. I got this pile of test strips we'll put in this box, which this is quite a large box. Fits 16, six of his 17 amounts. So I greatly appreciate Michael Dinsmore, and I greatly appreciate all of you that are here. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm trying to adjust all of this. I'm telling you, that old, old team clone, it's rocking and rolling, man. It's Good stuff. Let me stop that sh that screen share. So uh, let me pull that down. Lactonic, never heard. So it's an accord. It's not a note specifically. It's an accord. It's kind of this milky feel um, is what a lactonic accord provides. Yeah, yeah, because I, I really like Ganymede, the actual real deal Ganymede, and I didn't like Celestial, as you know. Not a fan. Svengali, how are you? Joseph, how are you? Hez, nice to see you. Warrior logo reminds me. Of, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's the ultimate warrior. It's exactly what it is. Okay, second sale from Making Sense, Jupiter Satellite. Yeah, just that's that's the two I would recommend. My top two are the two that you're interested in buying was Jupiter Satellite and Absolute Power. As the two best ones to me. Uh, Inception and Warrior were, I mean, close, close thirds, I guess you could say technically. Because it was kind of a tie for first and a tie for third is how you could look at it. Um, tie for second, tie for third, however you want to look at it. Um, but some good stuff. He did a great job. Uh, typically, they're pretty long-lasting. They're extraits. I think Mikey does 40% oil on some, 30% oil on others. Longevity is usually really good, 10-plus hours in my experience with all of his scent profiles. Uh, certain ones he'll go 30% to add brightness. Sometimes the 40% he doesn't lose the brightness. It all depends. But they're always above 25%. Golden Key, how are you? Like lactose. Funny enough, words for Ganymede because galaxy comes from Greek word for milky. Yep, there you go. Captain, what's going on, my man? How are you? Just did Making Sense Hall the other day. Den's fragrances are fire. Love them. I agree. I totally agree. Well, thank you for asking. You're an ad pop-up, bro. Hey, I mean, I don't try to be. It's just who I am. This is who I am. It's not a show. <laughs> this is me. If any of you ever hang out with me in person, same dude you see on camera, I promise. Especially in the live streams, because I curse more in the live streams. I'm the same dude. It's just who I am. I'm a passionate guy. When I'm into something, I'm really into something. When I'm not into something, I'm really not into something. It lasts a long while. I've gotten a dozen or so of his offering, and performance is never an issue. I've never had issue with performance on any of them. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. 106 likes, 116 viewers. I appreciate that. We got over the 100 like mark. We'll hang out for a few more minutes. Is there anything anybody wanted to ask or anything like that while you got me? Because I literally just wanted to jump on and open this package with you guys. Tomorrow's the Super Bowl. I'm going to put out the weekly rotation in the morning like I normally would do. And you won't see. Uh, you won't see any live streams from me tomorrow. I mean, that would be foolish, you know. In America, guys are watching uh, watching the Super Bowl. You know, That'd be, I'm not going to go live. <laughs> well, say I'm going to watch the Super Bowl. Real shit, it's in you. Yeah, no doubt. This is, like I said, this is who I am, man. Mike makes great stuff. Loving on average patch, which is always right here. Because here's the thing. I, I'm always testing stuff. And the reason I keep Mike's fragrances right here, they're always right here is once I've sprayed them a few times, like, see, there's no huge dent, but I've sprayed it enough. They're so strong that now I can just pull the cap and just sniff on them. I'm getting that sweet, sour candy smell. Now, if I want the vanilla dry down, I have to spray it on skin. And the other one I like to pull the cap and smell all the time is candy corn. 
Candy corn really does smell like this buttercream candy corn smell. And it's so good in the opening. I love the opening more than the dry down. That's why I'm cool with just sniffing it out the atomizer. So, so good. Uh, I haven't decided on either. So that's going to be tomorrow. tomorrow's fragrance pick. I, I haven't lined up the week yet. So I have no idea. And then same thing with Valentine's Day. I have no idea. Maybe at strong with you. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, something like that. Jared, I appreciate the $5. Thank you, sir. You greatly appreciate it as always. <sighs> Hogwarts Legacy, not really my, my bag. Um, I haven't really been playing much of anything lately. I haven't even been playing Madden. Um, what was it I attempted to try to play the other day and ended up turning? Oh, I played Black Ops 4 for a little bit and was terrible. Because I haven't played Call of Duty anything in a long time. It was it was brutal. Obviously, by the third match, it got a lot better because timing's off. And, I mean, if you're not playing on a regular basis, you're going to suck hard. And I did. I was terrible. After the third game, my kill-to-death ratio was like 1-to-1, one one, which is nothing. I think it was like 16-16. and 16. It was terrible. And I had got up to that point. So I was like, oh, let me put it down. I'll try again tomorrow. That was two days ago. I haven't played again since. Um, but I might play tonight. I might have a little bit of – I might not have time. It's 8 o'clock my time. I still got to do the weekly rotation. Might not have time tonight. No, not yet. Not yet. Everybody's asking about that. But it didn't come through. You did? Oh, yeah, I didn't get a super chat from you. That's weird. Let me get back down. How close – so that's the thing. I don't remember Oajan enough to put a percentage on it. That's why I didn't. Because uh, it's been years since I've smelled it. It's been at least three years since the last time I smelled it. I have not. They are for sale. Yeah, you just if you click the Making Sense link that's in the video description, take you right to the website. All six of these are on the website. We were using the website to cross-reference for the notes and everything. Yeah, that stuff is great. So glad I just decided to roll the dice on that one. I, I'm going to wear that this upcoming week. That's going to go in the rotation. Uh, not really. Not really. Because I really don't wear that many clones. I enjoy certain ones. I wear them here and there, especially when I'm doing testing for reviews and things like that. But, you know, anytime it's something I have, I'm going to wear the original most of the time. You know? like you guys have heard me say a bunch of times, the magic is there. Now, look, do I understand and appreciate the budgetary side of this, like the fragrances we just talked about? Absolutely. I put myself in the consumer's shoes, not the perfumer and the brand shoes. So I get both sides of the argument because some people can't stand clones and it's ripping people off, which technically it is. It is. It's stealing. But it's not against the law. You know, so... So I don't really have anything specific. Like, I don't really weigh in when it comes to stuff like that. I know that was kind of a long way around to get to that answer, but <laughs> I'm going to start ignoring the Super Bowl questions because I have no idea. <laughs> yes, these are these are sealed 17 mLs. You can get 30 mL, 50 mL, and 100 mL as well. Destiny 2, I haven't played that in a long time. Here's a throwback. Wu-Tang fighting game for PS1. Found an old. I have not played that. So my favorite, like hip hop oriented fighting game, is the Def is Def Jam Fight from New York. I have that on multiple platforms. I love, 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 love that. No, no, no. I'll be doing legs tomorrow, Captain. I'll be doing legs tomorrow. Today was an extremely active rest day. I wouldn't even call it a rest day at all. I did plyometrics with some box jumps. I did sprints. I did high knees. Uh, I did my some a little bit of core work. I did leg raises. That was the only core work that I did. Um, what else did I do? Jesus. Um, I did the monkey bar, bars back and forth. I hit the bag. I did an hour on the treadmill. Not so rest day of an active rest day. It was more like a, just a different training day without lifting, basically. I've never played them. You know, I own a few Dead Space games and I've never played them. I'll just pick them up at you know, thrift stores and places like that when they were super cheap over the years. Um, I've heard great things. I appreciate the $5 super chat. Yeah, I, I haven't. I haven't tried any. 
You see starts in two minutes. Fun fight at the main event tonight. UFC. Yeah, that's true. It is fight night. It's probably, and I said I was going to do about 45 minutes. We're there. I'm going to shut it down here in just a second. I'm going to get to the bottom of this real quick, and then we'll we'll shut it down. We may drop in the cousin of Buzz. Have you tried Sterling Soap Company? Yes, I have their uh, shave set for Lana Wheat Delone. Sandpiper? Yeah, because it's been a while since I've used it. I have the splash and the soap. It's been a while since I've used it, though. But they do have some great products. I agree. Need some info on clone? Ask me. Yeah, I know. You're 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 one of the clone kings in the community. You're all about the clones for sure. Oh, man. I, I appreciate you, Joel. You're very active on my channel and my social medias, too, man. I greatly appreciate the support. Looking for a niche fragrance, and I'm looking into Montal. Great brand to look into. But I don't want too synthetic of a scent. So it depends on the scent profile you're looking for. That's kind of a, a weighted question that needs to be peeled back a little bit more. Um, are you looking for something heavier for the cooler weather? Are you looking for something on the fresher side, something more everyday wear, something that's got a little bit more intrigue to it that's not necessarily challenging but not generic, basic, average type of scent profile? Give me, give me a little bit more to work with because I have – some decent experience with a good bit of Montals. I have like 12 or 13, maybe even 14. I haven't counted in a while. Bottles, not counting the stuff I've had decants of or stuff I've sampled that I don't have decants of. Uh, so I have decent experience with them. I don't have experience with all of them. There's tons of them, obviously. I sprayed that on my arm last night. It's funny that you say that. I sprayed it right here on my forearm, and I was just kicking it last night. It's so good. I have a five-ounce bottle. I'll never go through it. So this does that. You're going to see the green light from me taking it off probably. No, I didn't do it this time. Oh, because I have it on do not disturb. That's why. That way if my if I get a text or anything, you guys won't hear my watch on my phone go off. But this does my body mass index, skeletal muscle, all that good stuff. Yeah, I'm currently uh, 24% body fat, so I definitely still have a ways to go. I want to get down to about 15, 14, 15, 16 range. That is the goal. Um, over the next, I would say, 60 days, the goal is to get into the teens, so to drop you know, 5% roughly in the next two months, which is very much achievable. Um, I just have to stay consistent, not fall off the wagon. Honey Oud's amazing. I wore a sample today and got a compliment. I don't know if I should pull the trigger on a bottle. It's amazing. It's my favorite Montal. It's funny that that's the one that you elaborated on. Uh, yes, my wife stole my bottle. My wife stole my bottle. It is that simple. It's Turkish Rose and Musk. The name is, it's just as simple as the name is. My wife loves to wear it. I haven't worn it in a long time myself. It's a very clean, musk, watery rose. Very fresh. If you like rose, it's really good. It's very simplistic. It's not super synthetic. It lasts a really long time. It can be cloying if you spray it heavy, though. So be mindful. I don't know if you're the type that sprays heavy, moderate, or you're easy on the trigger. But that one's got plenty of performance. If you like fresh rose scents, that's a really, really good one for sure. Let's see. I think so, but that's again, you got to like rose because Ristretto Intense Cafe is more on the coffee, less on the rose. And Intense Cafe, you get a lot of coffee at first, but it dries down into a thick, jammy, sweet rose. It's more of a rose fragrance than it is a coffee fragrance. I have a bottle of that. I used to have a decan of that. I've done a review on it years ago. I got plenty of experience with that one. Um, it's more. It's more rose and coffee than it is coffee and rose. Keep that in mind. Again, got to be a big fan of rose for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to get stage ready kind of lean. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I can only sustain depriving myself a little bit for so long. And I mean, I'm not making myself suffer by any means. You can't sustain making yourself stuff suffer. When I say deprive, it's cleaning up. We, we talked about this Reese, on the last live stream, just cleaning up some things, you know, um, I'm going to get there. Let me get there. I'm dedicated to getting there, so I will. Uh, potentially in the near future. I saw a thumbnail for Chris's new video about Smolder Elixir. I didn't watch the video, so I don't know if that's really what the next fragrance is going to be, but I'll get that, if nothing else, to support Chris. You know, because I like Smolder. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the bottle. I haven't worn it in a while. Um, 
But if nothing else, to support Chris, because I really like Chris. Fragmental, for those of you that don't know who I'm talking about. Unfortunately, sprained my bicep tendons sitting out for the next few months. That sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks. Yeah, you can't just go by the scale because because my my body composition has shifted. What I see in the mirror and what I see on the scale are two different gauges for progress, you know, because um, I'm actually heavier on the scale than I have been in months past. I actually went up to like fully clothed. I'm like 204, 205, like shoes on, hoodie, layers, about to go to the gym, the whole nine hat, keys on me, phone, everything when I go to the doctor. The other day, I was like 204 fully clothed. Now, if I was just in gym gear with all the extra stuff, probably like 199. But my body fat percentage has continued to drop. My muscularity has increased. Um, so I would say it comes down to calories in, calories out. You need to, obviously, the quality of the calorie matters. That's what I'm doing now, cleaning up the calories. Bad calories, processed sugars, trans fats, a lot of satur saturated fats things like that. It's mainly figuring out what your maintenance level of calorie intake is per day and then subtract a few hundred and see which works for you. Some people can lose weight off of minus 300. Some people need minus 500. Some people have to do even more than that. It depends on your daily activity level for how much you should go into a deficit from your maintenance level. That's the A number one. Even before you start, you know, shifting the percentages of this much protein versus this much fats and carbs and you get start you know focusing on your macros before you focus on macros the main thing is to find out what's a good deficit a caloric deficit for you to be in that's really what it's about a lot of people like to do intermittent fasting people like to do keto i mean different things work for different people but i think that's the most important if you're not taking in less calories then what your body needs every day, you're not going to drop body weight. Preserving muscles where the higher protein comes in. I haven't tried either one, Darren. I don't have any experience with them. Wild leather, I just like the name. I haven't tried that one. I went all the way down to 13. And look, that's, that's pretty shredded. For an everyday guy that's not getting on stage, that's freaking shredded. You know? Congrats on the obliques and striations, <laughs> you know. Realize you get compliments to try everything under the sun, but Brioni Intense EDP is something that's up your alley. Impressive quality for a designer, fresh, dark, and upscale scent profile. That's probably something I would enjoy. Yeah, she's just it's like some things she just doesn't like. Like she doesn't like Austin from City Rhythm. I think it's incredible. I wore it yesterday. She's like, oh, I don't like that one. That's disappointing. So now I got to strategically wear it when I'm not going to be around her because the Siage is magnificent for me. It's a beautiful, boozy, sweet leather fragrance. It's fantastic. Niles, Niles released a, a banger here. She's not a fan. Now she does have about 50 fragrances, but there's only like five or six that she really wears often. Rose's Musk is one of them. Both Argos, Porfim, and Palace Athene. Uh, Rose's Signature Rosé from Zaharoff. Um, and YSL Libre Eau de Parfum. And then once it gets warmer, Coach Signature Eau de Toilette, Coach Floral Blush. She likes that one a lot. Uh, she's seasonal as well. She's got her heavier fragrances in the cooler weather, fresher stuff that she gravitates towards. Uh, she likes a Zorro Wanted Girl. She's a big fan of that one as well. Um, but it's just about smelling good for her. She doesn't have the passion or the insight that that i have with fragrances it's she's just it's just a byproduct of me loving it basically is what it comes down to i mean she's always wore stuff she's just not into it the way i am uh no we're only four days in sorry man it's not time super underrated great fresh juicy pineapple mint very nice super under i have a big 200 ml i need to wear that more i got a lot of it no i don't have any I don't have any. Uh, it's hard to go against the Chiefs. I know I know on paper the Eagles are where it's at this season, but it's really hard to pick against the Chiefs. I'm going to have to go with the Chiefs. Okay. I mean, it's just what I'm using. It's not, it's not that serious to me about, you know, the 
amount specific poundage of lean muscle mass that I have. It's just about how I feel and what I see in the mirror is mainly what it comes down to. Cause like I said, I'm not, I'm not working with nutritionists and personal trainers or anything like that. And I'm not trying to get on stage for physique or for open weight bodybuilding or my weight bodybuilding or anything like that. I'm not trying to do any of that stuff. That was my dad. My dad did that stuff. I'm, I just do it cause I love it. I just love being in the gym. I am the definition of a fucking gym rat. I love being in the gym. I do it just because I enjoy it. I've always loved it. I go up and down with it, but I've been very consistent the last few years, which I, even before I started to really lean out and got on TRT, I was still in the gym pretty often the last like year, year and a half leading up to before I got on TRT. Cause I've been on TRT for about two years now. Next month makes two years. <clears throat> A happy knot. It's about calories in, calories out. Yeah, macros, micros. Don't go under 500 to keep more muscle. Yeah, which I haven't even been tracking my calories. I've just been being mindful. Like I told told you guys this already. I've just been being mindful of it. Yeah, which I've done many times. And it's miserable, but it works for me, you know. But uh, the main thing, like if I really wanted to do a body recomp, like I'm really focused on dropping some body weight right now. If I really wanted to body recomp, it's all about carb cycling with me. Carb cycling works really well for me. Two days low, one day high, or two days low, a medium, a high, you know, something like that. Um, that's hard to stick to for me, though, but it traditionally has always worked for me. Um, but I'm not trying to – like I – I go up and down when I carb cycle, like I'll do it for two months and then now I'm just back to just eating and focusing on protein. And then I'll carb cycle for a few months. So that's kind of been the last two years. That's why you see me, you know, a little bit more vascular, a little bit more muscular, a little bit more vascular, a little bit more muscular, kind of up and down. That's why the body recomp is changed. I mean, you can see it in my face. I'm much, much trimmer than I used to be. It's, it's a body recomposition is the main goal, but right now specifically over the next 60 days, I'm trying to drop body weight and I'm trying to preserve as much muscle as I can. And I mean, I'm on testosterone. I'm taking in at least my weight and body in protein. So I probably won't lose much muscle. I'm just going to mainly lose strength on these lower carb days, basically. Giancarlo, pleasure. So, yeah, we're about to hit an hour. We'll shut it down. Let me uh, scroll to the bottom real quick. Summer Vibes 4.0 watching your video. Yeah, 4.0 is coming back as well it's iced pineapple so good uh when summer rolls around you'll see that one hit the rotation a few times for sure i enjoy drinking and eating i bet you do kyler i bet you do zaro you got me into that one i don't know yet okay my wife isn't either but i make sure to get her something from time to time yeah for sure i mean she enjoys it just not the way i enjoy it on and off for a few years now it's a good way to maintain an ideal way so i do fast which i, I talked Again, I talked about in the last live stream when we got on this subject. I fast for anywhere from 14 to 16 hours. My first meal of the day is my post-workout meal every day. Um, even if it's a real rest day where I'm not going to the damn gym, I still won't eat till like 2 in the afternoon because um, I stop eating by about midnight. So even at 2 in the afternoon, that's 14 hours till I break my fast, whereas – when it's a day where I'm at the gym, it's usually like three o'clock is usually the average about when I'm going to break the fast because I, I go I go to the gym on stimulants. I, I don't have any calories in me, so I'm not breaking my fast. <clears throat> and that's part of what helps with my body recomp. So only seems to work as weight loss if you do an hour of cardio after a 20 hour fast. So, yeah, so I do cardio post post training. Um, 3.2 miles an hour, six incline to 12 incline. I go up, every, up and down every two minutes. Um, sometimes I'll stay at six for a lot longer for several, maybe five minutes, but I'll do it anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. Like today was mainly, it was a no lifting day. So I did an hour today, whereas I'll do 20 to 30 minutes on days I lift. Uh, yesterday was pretty, pretty heavy. So the last three days were legs a heavy chest day, a lot of barbell work, um, and then back with deadlifts yesterday. So a lot of barbell work, bent over rows, conventional deadlifts, plus some machines and cables. So my body's pretty beat up over the last three days. So that's why I wanted to do, you know, just some kind of all around cardiovascular, full body calorie burn type of thing today. 
and uh, and then tomorrow's going back to legs again. And then my next rest day is going to be Wednesday. So then I'm going to go um, shoulders and traps, buys and tries. So legs tomorrow, shoulders and traps Monday, buys, biceps and triceps Tuesday, and then I'll take a day off on Wednesday. I have a rest day Wednesday. And possibly, depending on how I feel, I might just do some cardio on Thursday. So, so that'll be a good stretch of going pretty heavy. And I'll probably do like an easy cardio day and then just like a real rest day or a real rest day, then an easy cardio day. That's kind of how it's going to go for me. Uh, you know, I had people bringing up Anavar yesterday and GH peptides. and I'm not doing all that stuff. You know, I'm going to just stick to my test and focus on my nutrition. The training intensity and variety is there. You know, the intense volume is there. All of the stuff, everything that needs to be there is there. Um, it's just staying disciplined on my nutrition is what it turns. You know, you can't can't outwork a bad diet. Yeah, no no wind straw for me. I'm not trying to have my joints hurting. I'm not getting any younger. No wind straw for me. Just if I'm gonna do wind straw, I'll just soon get on equipoise and test with the test. But I'm not. I'm like I said. I'm not. I'm not interested in doing all that stuff because this is long term. The testosterone is long term. So I don't want to do stacks and get stuff off the street and all this other shit and start, you know, fucking up my blood work and raising my cholesterol and all these, you know, high, high triglycerides. And I don't want to do all that stuff because why, why play around when I know I'm going to be on testosterone for the rest of my life. And that already comes with having to monitor myself even more to begin with. So that's why I'm not doing none of this stuff. The, yeah. It, in the short term, all that stuff's cool and fun. And I've done those things in the past in my late teens and early twenties. I've done this different cycles and things like that in the past, but it's part of the reason my testosterone was so low in my mid thirties, you know? So, uh, so I'm just sticking, the, sticking to the course, but I appreciate you guys asking and taking interest in it. Um, as you can tell, I'm open book guys. I don't care. I don't hide that I'm on TRT. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know what? I'm a lie about it. I'm not the type. So uh, thank you all for being here. I greatly appreciate you guys coming, chopping it up, talking about these six new clones from Michael Dinsmore and making sense. Uh, make sure to like the stream before you leave. Make sure to check out today's haul video if you're interested in any of those new Armoff fragrances or my thoughts on Strong With You Intensely. And uh, we've a rotation coming out tomorrow, guys. Have a good one.